Hello and welcome to the Budget Builds official tech talk type thing we're going to be doing where today we are joined by 8 Megs. Hello. Thomas. Who may have died. <laughs> Wayne. <laughs> Good evening. And Merlin from Bosnia. <laughs> I had to fit in the Bosnia bit, you know. It's sort, yes. of a, it's sort of the little trait that goes with you. He's exotic. He's exotic. He's new to the channel. So what we're going to no, be talking about today, no. I've actually just lost my little notes. I've got my little, I'll bring up my little notepad. First of all, because we need something to talk about, Proton and Linux Gaming. So who here, other than me and 8 Megs, actually has any idea whatsoever what it's to do with? Anyone? Not particular. <laughs> okay. not, not really, yeah. I'm a bit of a okay, okay, so should we explain it to you? So, from my general understanding yes. is it runs a Windows compatibility layer similarly to Wine, meaning that when you start Linux and Steam together, uh, essentially what you end up with is a very Windows-like experience where the games just start and they generally run at near full speed with pretty much perfect compatibility. It's somewhat emulation, but more of a compatibility layer type thing. Is that borderline right? Yep, seems that way. That is borderline okay. Okay, so the general gist of things is that it's a big thing for Linux gaming, because currently may people's main downside for not wanting to get involved with uh, Linux gaming is um, purely down to the difficulty associated with it, because it sounds ridiculous to us, but when it does come to using Linux, you know, it's not as straightforward as using Windows if the game yeah. isn't natively supported because you do have to go through the trouble of getting wine to work and everything like that. And, you know, it just never ends up working as well as it should. Like, uh, 8 Megs, you, you game natively on Linux, don't you? Uh, I do. Uh, I, actually, I actually mentioned that Valve should do something like this in one of the previous podcasts. Well, that we should, uh, like, uh, game on Linux, because currently you just broke up a ton there, and I, I had no yeah. idea what you said. If I'm having one. Understand binary. That's for you. S sorry, uh, I was. Say I said. In I said in previous one that Valve should probably do something like this for. You Linux actually because... did. You you predicted Proton before Proton actually. Well, Steam Proton, whatever they're calling it. Yeah. You predicted it. As far as I can tell, Proton out. is for is just direct. Is just most of it is wine. Yeah, yeah, mostly. I mean, from the general most part, it's the implementation that's nice, because it varies per program, so there's no real worries about when it comes to compatibility. And because you don't have to worry about compatibility, it makes everything much easier, because uh, when I actually first built my PC, I was eight running megs. Linux. Oh, no. Or oh, not 8 megs, what the fuck? <laughs> You're saying your own name? Uh, <laughs> Sorry, we, did, we forgot to mention there's two 8 megs here. <laughs> He's I meant to say, Hamish, you're on, you're in the wrong base, but anyway. I, I, I know I'm in the wrong base, but it's so difficult to try and talk about Linux when, yeah. I'm, when I'm trying to also play this game, which is uh, well, we're trying to what we're doing. Wayne. So, um, sort of. so the general idea uh, behind it is it makes it easier because the only real way that you know, like Valve as a company, can gain any dominance in the OS market with Steam OS is if Steam OS actually works because. I'm pretty sure everyone was actually relatively hyped for SteamOS, and all it turned out to be was pretty much um, Debian with a skin. Uh, unless I'm wrong there, but I'm not too sure if I am wrong. Am I, I'm shooting at the yeah, wrong people, Yeah, it was Debian skin with old libraries from Ubuntu 12.04 just sitting in a folder for the games to use. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was strange. I um, oh, I don't know. Oh, I'm, oh. I'm, I'm a fan of Linux. I would use Linux all the time if an editor worked. And I know everyone in the comments is going to be saying, oh, but isn't it Lightworks that exists? I don't want to have to pay for another license for an editor that isn't as well equipped as, you know, my um, my current license. Or not current license, current editor. So that's sort of yeah, my main reason for not moving to Linux. But the whole gaming thing, I've given it a little bit of a go because admittedly I did start a Linux gaming video ages before Proton existed. Never never saw the light of day, but you get the idea. It's made things so much smoother. I mean, like someone like, I don't know, Wayne, Merlin or Thomas, like, do you reckon you'd use Linux at all because of this or, or no? I Maybe. Try. Yeah, if I ever have a low-spec PC, probably will. That's one thing that I yeah, always just end up. Balance out the teams a bit. I always, yeah. I always get this comment in my video on always on the 25p PC because I said there is no better OS for us to use on this PC than Windows XP. And admittedly, Linux was an option, but for those old ATI drivers, the Linux support just isn't there. Yes, it exists. Yes, it works. But if you're gaming on an old Radeon or NVIDIA chip, chances are your um. Your actual um, gaming experience would be better on an old Windows-based OS, you know? 
So, nah, mm. I don't know. I'm I'm a fan of virtual. I, I I always treat all operating systems equally, even macOS, and that's just literally just optimized uh, BSD. Mm. Um, yeah. I turned I turned off I turned off bots because uh, they're making the teams a little bit uneven. Yeah, it'll we, it'll we, take effect next round. We don't we don't need these bots. But yeah, the general <laughs> idea is Linux gaming. It's it's beginning to work better. I think is yeah, the main sure. thing. I'd need to take a full the look at it, but you know, enjoy it's games. a nice thing to see. Talking about Linux, though, have any of you heard of Terry Davies that aren't me or uh, 8 Megs? Uh, is no. he the dude who made Temple OS? Yes, he's the dude that made Temple OS. Now, or who I here knows Temple OS? Nope. Now, is Temple OS, I feel like we... In I, an OS? I feel like we'd need to give an explanation. Now, uh, Terry Davies, he was a schizophrenic programmer who, be oh, who who's believed he was, uh, he was sent from God. And he recently died. And admittedly, as much as a lot of people shit on the guy, it's actually quite a sad story because the guy was a genius. He can put, like, like, in terms of technical detail, Temple OS is a technical masterpiece. But the problem is, it's also designed to God specifications, which happen to include 16 bit color support, a 64 bit operating system, utilizing the Holy C programming engine, which he personally made. And what else is it? Isn't it 640 by 480 as God's chosen resolution? Hmm. Uh, how, do I, how do I vote? Uh, uh, F1 I by default. F1. Oh, vote cast. <laughs> there we go. I, I hope another bot doesn't just join. These damn bots, because they know we're talking about Terry Davies, so you know. Yeah. No, but the thing is, I, 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 was, I always found his story relatively sad. You know, like, when you yeah. read up on it. Like... Okay, like, how many people here ever thought about making your own OS? I did. Um, no. <laughs> I'd say I probably thought about making my own OS at some point. I mean... <laughs> I got to the point where I had it booting off a of floppy. That's, oh, yes. that's actually somewhat impressive. Yes, I'm impressed. Well done, sir. I mean, to be fair, in, like, Bosnia, aren't they still using, like, you know, Windows Embedded? Fuck everything? you, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Windows Embedded. Such a great OS, and I did see that 8 megs. No. But, um, yeah, uh, Terry Davies, we, I feel like I should give Temple OS an in-depth review, try it on some budget hardware. It's a pain in the ass to get working, apparently, though, but it is all open source. Oh, it is. So, I've, I've, I've only ever Terry seen Davies one person... Is just... Oh no! Sorry, Fuck! I, gonna, I missed the teleporter. I was going to say the only person I've actually seen, you know, get Temple OS working was on a ThinkPad because, <laughs> as you know, everyone involved with that type of thing is. uses a ThinkPad. I mean, Eight Megs is even on a ThinkPad right now, and he's the one that's hosting this bloody server. Yes, yeah. but it's being hosted on a VPS. It's being hosted on a VPS, which essentially means that it's not being hosted in the middle of Ireland. Because wasn't there that whole thing about you being involved with the IRA? We can't touch on that on the podcast. <laughs> no, we need to move away from that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in case the police were wondering, we have his address. <laughs> yeah, he spelled it out for us once. <laughs> you hear the police arrive mid uh, midway through the podcast. Nina, Nina, Nina. Uh, oh, does I meet my mum? Here come the guardy. Oh, but yeah, Terry <laughs> been on mute. Okay, this is actually something that's more channel related next on topic. Uh Tech Throwdown has returned. Yeah. Who, who knows Tech Throwdown? Not me. Didn't he get run over by a salt grit truck in the middle of summer? No, that's just what we told people when they asked where his videos went. Oh. For anyone that's been around the channel for about a year now, I did a collab ages ago when I had like 500 subs with a guy called Danny from Tech Throwdown. Now, he shortly got an apprenticeship after we'd done the collab and he deleted all his videos, and people have been asking where he went. And we, well, you know, we're quite sarcastic, and we've been jokingly saying, oh, yeah, you know, he died. He got run over by a grit salt truck in the middle of summer, never saw it coming, thinking, well, no one's that stupid. Everyone's going to realise he didn't really get run over by a grit salt truck. Yet again, the tech community summer. has uh, never ceased to amaze us, and people actually believed he was... <laughs> Wayne, like... get a flag back, please. In fact, Wayne, didn't you believe that he died when we told you? I think so. You, you believe? <laughs> yeah, uh, Danny's not, not back. Not that I knew he was in the first place. Danny's back. He, uh, he's back on the Discord. He said hello today, so we're classing that as his official return. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that, that's one thing. What is your guys' opinion on collabs? Like, personally, I'm not a big fan of them, but I was just wondering what you guys think of them. Like, um, I don't know if anyone wants to go first. Wayne, possibly? I well, personally find collabs are okay if it's like a competition, but just generally getting together to do something now. 
Yeah, I feel like the problem with a collab is you try and cram too much in on either side, and it sort of feels like, yes, you can have someone be there for a minute to be... It's Okay, here's an idea of how, like, an ideal collab, how I've seen them be played out. Definitely competition types, as I've definitely... I've done the competition type uh, collabs. Uh, connection interrupted. That was uh, not good. Mm. Mike, is everyone else getting this uh, pop up on their their screen? Um, well, I, 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 it's never off my screen, but anyway. Oh, okay. But th essentially, one issue I was uh, like noticing with collabs is a lot of the time they just don't seem like they fit together. Like you get two channels that are relatively similar, but the problem is one channel develops one style, and when they try and convert to the other, you know, it just doesn't work as a as a as a video, it doesn't work coherently. Like, I don't know if you guys have got any collabs you specifically liked, like, on any channel. Like, I enjoy when John Linneman has someone that's a developer have, like, a minute talk on DF Retro to talk about, like, console power at the time. <laughs> that just, that's, like, the way I like a collab to do when it's feature someone else, like, a little feature in it. Not so much a full video. Oh my god, Hamish, you have 509 uh, milliseconds of ping. Yes, uh, I have no idea what's going on with that, actually. I don't know if anyone can actually hear what I'm saying in, like, uh... Oddly enough, no, Dis I, we can. It's yeah, just... oddly enough, Discord's actually working Sammy. absolutely fine. I just can't, just sort of can't play this game that we're playing in the background. But yeah, collabs, they're an interesting thing. Uh, don't suppose anyone else wants to talk about collabs? The £5 PC challenge was good. £5 PC challenge, I think we all enjoyed. That's because it was like more of like an adventure style video where, you know, Jesus, my ping, um, <laughs> where we could all like have a little bit of our own say. Uh, no, left. Another thing that what was it was it who wanted to talk about Intel? It was you that wanted to talk. Oh no, it was Wayne that wanted to talk. Yeah, Wayne, you wanted to talk about Intel. Go on, go on. Tell us what you yeah, think about Intel. I mean, what's Intel going to be doing about the uh, Ryzen problem that they've got? I'm telling you, Netburst two. Netburst two. Over over nine thousand levels in the pipeline. What they're going to do <laughs> is they're going to they're going to make it. It's it's going to clock to fifteen gigahertz, but it's going to be like. Uh, Pent Pentium 4 IPC again. They're going to finally do it. The Netburst meme is coming true. Apart from this time, we're going to stick it in laptops. I mean, to be honest, more cores isn't making a huge amount of difference to gaming. It's the higher clock speeds at the minute. Yeah. Which is really what um that's all that's really all right. I just I just watched who, who was that that jumped across and died on impact. It was me. Oh okay. I don't know. It could have been. Me. I think I'm the only dinosaur. Oh, <laughs> but, it's gonna uh, happen again. But the but the uh the uh thing that I noticed was um. At least with like Ryzen, Ryzen, you know, two thousand series, Ryzen Plus, is the only real difference to the architecture was the uh, the change from a really cr Ryzen one clocked to about four gigahertz on a really crappy low power node, uh, which was pretty good for uh, uh, like you know Epic and server side stuff, but it wasn't great for consumer side. Uh, originally, I think if Ryzen had shipped with a, a Ryzen uh, a Ryzen Plus equivalent, you know, like uh, on, the, on like a higher powered node. I reckon that, you know, people would be considering Ryzen a lot more. Because admittedly, generally, I don't often hear a lot of bad stuff about Ryzen, but you do hear a lot of fanboys try and, uh, you do hear a lot of fanboys trying to, uh, defend, um, defend an Intel purchase when the Ryzen option, us option usually works out better. Like, I've had people tell me, why would you buy a 1700X when I can buy a core i5-7600? You know, four, like, that's four cores versus eight on a locked CPU versus an unlocked one. I mean, even, oh no, I'm going to get railed. Even the bloody, um, the bloody, um, what's it called? The bloody a AMD Athlon 200GE beats the G4560 personally. I don't know what, what was your guys' opinion. I finally uploaded my video on it, which took yeah, forever I, to make. I was going through your video and I did see the comments and I did see some people recommending like the G4560 of course over it, just saying that in terms that it's just as a CPU, it may perform better. But well, that seems to be all people think, focus about of Intel. They focus about their performance instead of actually the platform they're on, which a lot of people buying PCs actually would favour rather than having, yeah, at the time, a slightly faster CPU. Some people do prefer having and that realistically, upgradeability in the future. Yeah, and realistically, the main quote they give is um, they're never happy with, um, whatchamacallit, the, uh, they're never happy with CSGO benchmarks. Now, CSGO is a weird one because it's not a very reliable benchmark. You can use the built-in benchmark, well, not built in benchmark, use the workshop benchmark, but it's not representative of real world performance whatsoever. The only real option, if you want to see CSGO performance, is 720p low in a deathmatch, personally, which is the way I test. And 
I don't know, people always tell me, oh, but it gets 30 FPS higher in CSGO. Well, no other game do you see that disparity between a 200 GE and um, a G4560. I thought Battlefield 1 performed a little bit worse on the 200 GE for some weird reason, which was very strange. I don't know if you guys saw the uh, review, but it came yeah, across... Yeah, it performed the... very poorly. Yeah, it was like, like bloody PUBG, you're looking at 90 FPS on average, and then you swap down to uh, Battlefield 1... And it does not scale well. You're looking at horrible performance um, purely just because the game needs more than two cores, which is really one of the main limits of the 200 GE. But, you know, it's a little APU, so what exactly are you going to do about it? You know, there's not really much else you can no do. It's, it's, it's a 40 quid processor. That's all it's ever going to be. And I really enjoyed my time with it. But till DDR4 goes down in price, it's a no-go in my recommendations. You know, I like okay. it, but, you know... You might as well buy 11.55. Oh, whoops! I need to click. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well done. I'm busy. I've been using a. I've been using the bloody cheap PC all day, which brings oh, us God, on to our next math. topic. Uh, actually, what are people thinking of LGA 775? Oh fuck, Weeblin! I thought I thought Merlin. I thought you were a bot because there's one with a very similar name. <laughs> you kicked Merlin. Just I did. I kicked. You motherfucker. He kicked no, because he's you're a, Bosnian. You know he's, he's part of the. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a race thing. It's yeah. a race thing, you know. Uh, in terms of 775 yeah. PCs, I'd say there's only a few scenarios of which it would be viable. One, if you're like Merlin here and you live in Bosnia or other third world countries. <laughs> or other countries. Keep... It's treating me. <laughs> or other countries it's without it. you're access. You're in an extremely, extremely low budget, like something under about 30 under quid. 50 quid. Under, 30 I'd, say, quid I'd, say, I'd say 30, 35 tops, because uh, above that, you can get an 1155 SFF yeah. PC. But the dude who... LGA 775 is perfectly please. adequate for workplaces. Yeah, it's Def absolutely way, fine. It's way Even a Core 2 Duo is absolutely fine, and it's absolutely fine for retro uses. The issue that we I'm have... Playing, with... I'm playing under Core 2 Duo right now. Oh, yeah, but then so again, so... this game runs on a bloody potato, doesn't it? It's not exactly like a good <laughs> advertisement for the 775 platform. It, need, it needs a Pentium at least <laughs> it gets the hey. Linux users approval well, so do you when you use a 775 PC don't worry they're still good they can run games from 1999 <laughs> core 2 Core 2 Duo still run Minecraft excuse me this game was made in 2005 he makes a valid argument. But what's it the called? Engine. No, I, we've got no issue at all with like 775 as a socket. In fact, my new, my oh, next yeah. video is going to be using a 775 PC. But the only reason behind it is because for 35 quid and under, you can't avoid using 775. Like, you can get a Core 2 quad you cooler can, and hard. motherboard. You can, but you have to search locally. These are just e deals I got off eBay. Um, so, you know, they're not exactly spectacular deals. They're just sort of common... Hopped on eBay, bought a bundle for a tenner, you know, that type of deal. Yeah. Which is just sort of a repeatable deal. It's an eSports PC. Deal, yeah. You're not going to be running PUBG on it. Fortnite struggles enough. Fork knife. Fork knife. Yeah, you know when you, you yeah. get your fork knife and it just, it's not the Used kind of experience you want. talk about that. Yeah, bloody it works. Fortnite, Fortnite's a surprisingly optimised game and I get yeah. a lot, the amount of times, if you, it? if you benchmark it, all you get in the comments is, I cannot believe you are benchmarking Merlin, uh, you caught me at a bad time. I was adjusting my graphics settings. <laughs> That's a good advertisement for the Call cool 2 Duo. So good you have to readjust mid gameplay. <laughs> no, I just wanted to see my frame oh, rate, so I was turning on the frame counter. <laughs> Hi, guys, welcome to another LGA 775 gaming platform where today we're going to be playing Open Arena, and today you can play the Stop game at 15 FPS. Don't Hello, forget. everyone, and welcome. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you know no. what? I played this on Intel Extreme Graphics Stop a few days ago, on, and I legitimately only got 15 FPS. <laughs> That's Jesus one thing. Quake Three is easier to run than this, but it's because this game has a heavier reliance on uh, seven, no, seven, seven, five. No, <laughs> uh, um, OpenGL. This game requires OpenGL more. You know what I mean? Well, to be fair, it does only use OpenGL 1.0. I mean, to be Wait. fair, Open Arena will run on a potato. Yeah, Open back. Arena is just a good free game. I want to do another video: best free games out today, and this would be one on the list, but mainly because we could advertise your uh, your server. I could apply yeah. for legal ownership. And then using <laughs> using my knowledge that of the fact you work for an Irish organisation which must be not be named, I can blackmail you into providing me with access to the server and the revenue. Please, it's not funny if I ever need a background check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm, I'm only I'm only joking. I'm sorry. I know. Yeah. To be fair, oh, I, I, know, I, I, might... if anything, I'd be more suspicious. I've been to Derry, so you know. You might apply for a job at McShamus uh, Farm. I did just call it's it Derry only... instead of London Derry, so. Me. 
Yeah. You're, you go you're going to get killed by loyalists, and now that you call it Londonderry, you're going to get killed by the IRA. Guys, please, yeah. we'll get him first. For every Irish <laughs> member out there that may or may not be part of an organisation which we cannot name live on YouTube, uh, we have to inform you that uh, um, I'm a big fan of you two. <laughs> <laughs> get that. They're gonna let number me, one. They're gonna. They're gonna. They're gonna. They're gonna let me go now. Um, okay. They're not gonna let but you yeah, go now. But generally, seven seven five is mainly cheap because of RAM prices. DDR two, you can get like eight gigs for like eight pounds. It's like so unless cheap. you're buying laptop shit. That, oh, that's get got yeah. very expensive. Four gigabytes, uh, single side. Is it single sided RAM or whatever? It's yeah. Called? Stop shooting me, God. Single damn. rank. Single rank. Single rank. Are you on my team, yeah. Merlin? I can't tell. Yes, I am. Oh, David. I wanted to hurt you. This isn't a platform. Stop that hurting me, God I'm damn not, it. I'm not hurting you. For people that are watching this in the audio form, they're not going to understand what they're saying. They are going to think I'm physically sitting in the radio room hurting you, because this is all recorded with us in the same room. We flew Moslin... M Mos Moslin? We flew, Moslin. <laughs> we flew Merlin all the way over from Bosnia. I missed Merlin. Yeah. I mixed up Merlin and Bosnia and ended up Moslia. Uh... Moslin. Mo I, hey, hey, I had to I had to sneak over in the back of a uh, articulated lorry. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> we, snuck, we, snuck, we, snuck over, we snuck over 8 megs into the studio. And we're going to tell the people the studio is just a shed. We snuck him into the shed and we got him recording this podcast. And, you know, he's loving it. So it covers it's a lot. It's freezing in the shed. Could you please get a heater or something? Uh, you know, the heaters are, he heaters are just, they're not needed. Uh, what's it called, though? I, uh, I will overrated. say... Only the hipster use them. Only the hipsters use heaters. I've actually got a little uh, campfire going, haven't we? Like, can everyone put their hands out and feel like the warmth of the heater going on? You know, you feel that? Like That's... All about that log fire. We've got the log fire. Thomas is there. He's got his feet up. I feel no, bad it's... for anyone that watches expecting any talk about tech, and currently they're hearing about how yeah. we smuggled an Irishman into a shed just to record the <laughs> podcast. Uh, okay, uh, moving on from that. Um, watching this? Wait, Seeing as the, we were talking about RAM prices, DDR4 price fixing. Samsung's admitted that they're pretty much keeping limited production to maintain they're demand. They're calling a Nintendo, yay. Uh, yeah, but... Sure, they did this with fucking light bulbs back in the 1920s, and multiple, company, multiple companies all congregated and uh, fixed prices. And yeah. lifetimes. Yeah, but that's the issue. See, I can't game on a light bulb. I can game on my RAM. Which the is... thing is, you can't game on a light bulb. You can okay. Because Jesus, you I'm not. I'm being brutally actually... honest. Can I have a second to talk to the Bosnian man about how much boring his childhood was, seeing as he finds <laughs> he finds a light bulb as entertainment? <laughs> Go on, Merlin. No, no, tell no, us all about no, no. growing up with a light bulb for entertainment. I accidentally <laughs> tried to kill Wayne. Go on. So what yeah, did you do with the light bulb? Childhood. <laughs> basically, my childhood. Okay, what did you trying do? Trying to with kill Wayne. Trying to kill Wayne. Playing, playing with a light bulb in the back of a ladder. Everybody tried. <laughs> Oh, okay. So, like, oh, DDR4 is price fixed, oh, and pretty much no one seems to be doing anything about it, apart from the Chinese government Wait, who are is suing China. We, we, yes. we can do, but just not majorly. We try oh, and keep God it. Oh I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure, like swearing isn't our biggest concern, considering that we've already accused one member of being part of a terrorist faction. Yep. Excuse me. What did we say? We didn't say that. <laughs> we never. We, said we did, that. but it but we phrased it differently. <laughs> Chucky, your law, Merlin. <laughs> um, <laughs> a casual chortle. For anyone that didn't know, Merlin actually has a slight Irish twang to his accent. Like you, uh, can, you can hear it. It's pretty. It's impressive. It's, yeah, it's slightly strange. It's, it's, it's being in VC with me. It's I impressive. Think. No, it's it's from years of torture by an Irishman. How long were you in the basement for? Like three weeks, or was it more? No, no, no. Seventeen years. Seventeen. Merlin, years. me with the balaclava is doing me. <laughs> I just got that. Um, yeah. Okay. But DDR4 price fixing. I don't see any signs of like coming down like soon. Like it's the one thing that stops everyone from moving to a new system because like you need the RAM and you're like no one can get hold of it. You know anymore because of how expensive it is. You get me? You guys no. get me? I feel that you get me. I feel that Wayne gets me. Wayne, do you understand yeah. what I mean about moving to a new system? Yep. No. Since I've you... been on mine for nearly seven years now. Yeah, but Stop it. To be fair, the i7-3770 is probably one of the best budget buys you can get. It's just literally you Unfortunately, can't... I bought my new. <laughs> yeah, but like, they're like, how much are they now for a 3770? About, uh... About 120 on CX. Something 120. Like probably Please take care of Scott. Oh, no, they you know, like, and that's like a bl bloody good chip to buy, an i7-3770, considering IPC-wise, um, it's about 
15, 15, 12, 15 percent behind Skylake, and Skylake is KB Lake, and KB Lake is Coffee Lake, meaning that Intel's used the same architecture for three generations. Yeah. Jesus, <laughs> Have that, has any other company done that before? Rebranded their product. Nintendo three times? has. Nintendo, yeah, but what, no, they. How did they rebrand three times? The Wii well, U was actually been just using the Wii. The same thing for twenty years. Nintendo using the PowerPC architecture and then moving on to ARM was a strategic decision because ARM is similar to PowerPC, helping aid development. <laughs> um, what's it called? Let's not let's not move in on. In practice, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Yeah, it's in like practice, PowerPC and, Arc, uh, and, and ARM are very cold. similar, which is one of the reasons that the Switch development is so good for Nintendo, and that's one of the reasons that they've actually been able to pull off such bloody brilliant development on the Switch. I mean, I've been really getting into consoles recently because... Uh, yeah, doesn't. we're a PC orientated channel, and I use my PC the majority of the time. But you can't deny, console Lies. wise, you're, you're talking to us on a Wii U now. I'm talking to you guys from the Wii U. Yes. Admittedly, I did pick up. I picked up a Wii there U. Is no, there is an open arena port for the original Wii. There we Are go. Kidding? I'm going to fire up the Wii, and I'm going to one v one eight megs in it. But yeah, okay. So yes. like, I was in town with the guys, and we we the went guys. through CEA with the guys, and we yes. were in there, and we saw a um, we saw I a. I was so close to scoring, but that Scottish we, cunt got it. We saw. <laughs> <laughs> we saw a um, a Wii U in CEX, and it was a, in, a it was a discount price, and we Ooh. thought, you know, we've never played the Wii U. And, you know, there's a couple yeah. of games there as well, like Mario Kart, Mario Maker, all of those types of games. Uh, Super Smash. Mario Kart Maker. Mario Kart Maker, you know, Super Mario Kart Brawl 64. Wait. Uh, DS. Uh, speaking of uh, Nintendo and Mario and Brawl yeah. games, have they put Bayonetta in uh, Sma Super Smash Brawl? I have no <laughs> idea. Uh, but, uh, because that'd be an awkward thing to explain to the parents of the kids who are playing fucking I Super mean, Smash Bros. I had enough trouble explaining it in a way Zero Suit Samus. Oh, what's it called? <laughs> Bloody... Um, that's the thing. Like, the Wii U is a console, though. Like, I picked it up. Women again? I've had two consoles pleasantly surprise me recently. Xbox One X, which is, if you get it at the right pri price, the ultimate couch co-op console. You're because double team, dear. Because you got yeah. bloody upscaling 4K on 360 and original Xbox games or whatever. It's four times native resolution plus AF and AA, whatever, with uncapped yeah, frame rates. Old, really. You get the general idea. I've really enjoyed no, that because, don't. you know, how many here of you guys have used like a neck? Oh, is it still a next gen console? They're still, they've always called the next gen console. Current consoles. gen consoles. Cur that's how you say it. They're called current gen, but I've never heard them. Yeah. I got an assist and I've no idea how. I've never called, heard anyone call them anything other than next gen. And what do you think of the PS4? The PS4 is a nice thing to use when you you have like a little bit of time to spare, like to you, play games. You honestly sound like you're being held in a room captive by Sony. None of that sounded genuine. Uh, <laughs> it's yeah, a nice console to consoles. use if you've not got much time. <laughs> I, I, time. <laughs> Are we talking about the PS4? The PS4, yeah, the PS4 is currently the PS4. I would say is the best. Stat like it's the best line. Yeah, it's got the it's got good stats for like the stats. First, it's not a fucking Tom top Trump's card. Yeah, I play the I play the the, the PS4. GTA 4 has crashed. I, I couldn't give GTA 4. Are you playing GTA 4 currently? I I was. He, he's given up um, on us. Yeah. That... Fucking the PS4. I would say out of the first like sort of batch of the consoles out of the Xbox One or the PS4, I'd say the PS4 is definitely the best, just due to the fact that. Much better performance in games, obviously better visuals, and also the exclusives. Yeah, the exclusives. I mean, if you've if you've got a PC, there's not really as much need to get an Xbox oh, as there would be a PS4. The bloody because Xbox One had such a rocky launch. The, they it did, definitely. It up so bad. They, the, they downgraded the graphics chip, but still mm. left in the ES RAM, which made no sense, because then had and the MSRP, CPU. 500, I mean, what, what was it, 500 quid? Yeah, 500 quid. Yes, well, I mean, and the PS4 was coming at about 400, and even then at that price, you got two games admittedly, two you could just Admittedly, this sounds sound ridiculous, you could justify the original RRP of the original Xbox One if they'd actually gone with the original specifications, which included the Tonga Tahiti hybrid, apparently from the leaked documents that were shown. And I personally mm. believe that, because Xbox has never really been the type to shy away from sticking a big fuck-off graphics card in a console a la Xbox One X, which has a big fuck-off graphics card, a.k.a. Pretty much, an, pretty much an RX 590. Well, pretty silent, 5490. A GTX 770. It's not a, a GTX 770. From CX. 
Um, yeah, don't get don't order from CX. Five broken cards in a row. <laughs> you say don't order from CX, but you you ordered your nine six hundred GT, and that's been my nine six hundred GT. Great card. No, I cannot fault it. It is run GTA five, GTA. solid thirty FPS. I mean, what from a fucking how old is this card? About ten years old. Yeah, and it runs GTA fucking insurgency. I've, I've never had any eight. issues at all with yes. um with uh, CEX. It's really hit or miss though. You're in London, it aren't is, you? It is. Yeah. I'm running on a nine six. It seems, it seems it's problem problem with because there's so better than me. Because there's so many stores, it's like I think it's at a point where they because there's like one main testing bench and London's in such like a close proximity of the stores. They rely on that one place to test cards. Yeah. So if you bring them to like all these other stores, they don't have a test bench. You're like, oh, just send them to this fucking one place and then it'll probably just be like oh, I'll skip it and all that shit because I mean yeah. you can't say that doesn't happen because I received like four or five cars oh yeah I've received I received a dead 3870X2 but you know given how much heat that thing makes uh, my go to in the end was purely just to uh, unplug the fan leave it running on a uh, a benchmark for a little while and then the other GPU came back to life. I don't recommend doing that, but you know it did work and it made for a bloody good video. Um, so CX have definitely like they've been in a few. Well, I say a few problems, but a few, people on YouTube have definitely skits. called them out for things like a. Uh, remember that YouTube uploaded the video, basically calling out CX for reprinting. Yeah, they, they yeah, reprinted some cases. Yeah. And I, don't, I mean, I don't, I don't see the problem with that person. There. I think they should be marked as reprint cases online. I feel yeah. like if you go in store, admittedly. I have got a reprint case from CEX, and it is a very high quality print. We're talking near standard, but it's still not original, you know. Like I've got the, I would, I bought San Andreas. I've got the map. It's wonky, I got the but manual. It's good wonky. But I, I mean, I agree. Yeah, but it's a high quality print. But if you look at the very fine details, it just it doesn't look as yeah. clear as a, as an original print. But it's not bad. So you're I mean, saying I agree it's with the... shit, but it's not that shit. I'm saying yeah. it looks all right. Like, no, I agree with the concept of reprinting the obviously the uh, sort I'd much of cases have a and everything printed like case that. In their quality, yeah, yeah, no rather than nothing. Exactly, that's my point. I mean, if I could have the game Bad DLA, shit happens again. If they if they pointed it out though, like you said, that it was like a reprint, then all be and that'd be a great sort of way to like sort of. I feel like just, just lower the price is. by just lower the price by a pound and yeah. let Fun people fact, buy the This reprint. map was ported from an Unreal game. <sighs> it looks like it's blubbed from an Unreal game. It looks. <laughs> Like it, it look, it's got that Unreal look. It looks like it looked nice in Unreal. Not that it doesn't look nice here, but it still looks very nice. Very nice it lighting. Doesn't look ni it's not a, not that it doesn't look nice here, but it doesn't look nice here. It does look <laughs> nice here. You know, like you know, like when you go to Bosnia, it's like this place could look really nice, but then you remember, you know, it's Bosnia. No offense to anyone Bosnian, mm -hmm. we are joking. We just we love you, man. But speaking about consoles and games, like have you really noticed about the sort of if you think about, I'm going to talk about open world games here, like you know the Far Cry series, you have. Yeah, um, like, oh, Assassin's, like Creed. Assassin's Creed. You've got games like Skyrim, which is an RPG at heart. Yeah. But, I mean, I've noticed like over the. I know it's not just me. Obviously, there's a lot of videos revolving around this, but it's just something I like to talk about. Like, it's just it's so blatant now, just how every single of game with open world aspects, they're all being sort of merged into sort of the same sort of like mesh. Yeah. Or, like sort of mold for a game, if you know what I mean. Yeah. It's a lot just of everything lose their originality. Everything. Yeah, so no unique. call the use of singularity. It definitely is because I mean, if you look at Far Cry, something like I'd say Far Cry Two is the prime example of what I thought Far Cry should be like. Far Cry Two, I haven't actually played. I own it. I recommend I... Far Cry Two. It's basically <laughs> just a sort of a dynamic world which the events do occur like just around. I mean, it's just it's sort of around you. It's like a, it's just something cool. Like you have no real main objective apart from to kill the jackal, which is like the guy. So it's sort of like you I'm... make your own quest. I mean, to be fair, in a lot of ways, to go on that topic, I was uh, I was actually watching uh, Digital Foundries. I, I you gotta admit, you gotta love Digital Foundries content. And uh, Ri Definitely. Richard uh, was doing, he did a video on uh, yeah, yeah. the Red Dead Redemption trailer, and he touched on it at the end. The thing that makes Rockstar Games so special is the fact that it's, it's like Rockstar the old days of game soul. development because you it's... have unlimited. They've got a, a budget, and they the budget's got no limit because the idea is the creativity, not so much the profits. Yeah. But and the admittedly, Rockstar, Rockstar knows they'll make a profit because they know um, ultimately, it doesn't matter how yeah. much they spend, they will make five the times back what they fun. spend. But it's... the thing about Rockstar is they're like one huge studio and they primarily focus on one game. And what they do is they don't just sort of have like how Ubisoft, they're three studios and then one will focus on Far Cry, one will focus on Assassin's Creed. Ubisoft have it like... So there's people focus on the story, but before they do the story, they want to make the world around the story, if you know what I mean. Yeah. They would make that sort of well, they'll do the, all the activities while concurrently there'll be someone making a story and focusing on them make that as good as possible with the world given, which is what I sort of think games these days don't really do as much. They're too, I wouldn't say they're too story focused, but I'd say games are too easy. 
They are. Well, that's one thing that annoys me. Every game is too easy. Do you know what was a breath of fresh air? I bought Fable Anniversary, and on the PC you had a brutal mode. Do you know what? It's nice. It's made the game a bloody challenge. I love Fable, but the game was too easy. Now they come out with this brutal mode. More games need a brutal mode or something like they that. They do. I mean, you, you, might like, like, not... you might like Quake 1 on Nightmare Mode. Oh, yeah, I probably should check it out. But the thing is, you know, the thing is, when I say a nightmare mode, I don't mean like a horribly shallow yeah. implementation where it just means oh, enemies do more da damage and there's more enemies more on the screen. Ones. That's it's not a nightmare fun. mode. I mean stuff that actually, I mean a game that actually makes you think. I've been playing yeah. a lot of Oddworld New and Tasty recently, and that's like, that's based, that is based on an old, an old bloody uh, game uh, that was actually quite difficult. And they, they, they've actually what left more? an option in to play the game in a hard mode. I don't know. Make it difficult. I know the sort of thing like that. I know Bethesda gets a lot of slack, but one thing you have to give them credit for is Fallout 4 Survival. It was really well done. I have like, I mean, at, I've been at base, a giant at base it was just simply like, oh, enemies deal more damage, you take less damage, you heal slower using like healing things. Yeah. But, fucking, uh, but then they added in like the, the sort of Fallout New Vegas hardcore God mode. Damn it. They have first hunger. <laughs> Tiredness, you get diseases even. Too, Swimming in water, drinking dirty yeah, water, eating good. dirty foods, you get all these diseases and fucking bacteria. It, it's actually, yay! Oh, well, honestly, I, I think I really need to just take some time out, you know, if I have a holiday coming up or something, and just spend my time playing through Fallout 4 because I've, I've been told it's brilliant. I just, well, not brilliant, I've been told it's a fun game, but a horrible. Fallout it is game. a horrible Fallout, it's and that's like another sure. subject. Like, I mean, it's just so dumbed down to the point where it's just like. It's fun, but it's just a very shallow fun. Yeah, but I'm the type sort of guy that was annoyed yourself. that bloody Fallout 3 isn't like Fallout 2, if you get me. Fallout 3 I'm was Fallout 3 is just as bad. Fallout 3 was just... I would say it doesn't deserve the hate it's given it's these days because Fallout 4... It's beautiful world building it is, at the time. But it's the just... Actual... Fallout 3 was let down massively by how linear the story was. I mean, you the side quests... How much the game great. crashes. Yeah, but man, that's the game real engine for you. But yeah. then it's like... In terms of ga actual gameplay in Fallout 3, side quests are great. The actual roleplay you could do in that... Great, but as soon as it came to the story, it was just let down so massively. <laughs> yes. Like, I mean, oh, go on. Oh, no, I was just saying that, that it's like, you know, I haven't been. It's one of the reasons, like, I was honestly hyped for Skyrim. That was a game yeah. that I was. I remember it was sold out everywhere where I was. Do you know what I had to do wow. in the end? I ended up having to go to Asda. <laughs> I had to go to Asda, the bloody food shop, and I had to pay £5 extra, which was a lot for me on release. Let's just say this I was 10 when I played Skyrim. And even then, I could realise how shallow it was compared to Oblivion. I was like, right, why is there no attributes? Why is there, like, less options? Why is there... Sort of, like, I was playing the Thieves Guild. I remember this really... Like, yeah. yeah. And I was like... So I didn't sneak. And I was, like, running in there. And I was just hacking and slashing everyone. I was like, wait. I haven't had any penalties. I haven't it's failed a quest. What's going on? It's a Thieves Guild mission. And I'm running in here with a fucking... Oh, I'm I, feel, I, do I do feel like I need to get back to my Oblivion playthrough in Scotland. I my way I, I, just just run. I picked it up. I picked it up for three. Wrong quid. Way. Oh, whoops, sorry, I picked it up for three quid in a uh, in a charity shop when I was in Scotland, and I bought it on three sixty. And I I started playing it. I'd never played Oblivion before. I. I, I'd been told it was brilliant. So I just, I created this character. I created George Michael as this horribly <laughs> deformed dude. George uh, Michael! Bloody, and I got into playing it so much, and I know exactly where I am, but my disk drive on my Xbox 360 died, oh. and I can't play it. So what, well, I had it installed to the hard drive. So what I'd have to do towards the end of the time I was in Scotland is I would have to put the game in and out, hoping that it would just enough, it would verify just enough to start the game from the hard drive, and occasionally, after an hour of putting it in and out, it would. Uh, but the issue I had was my character, he's a vampire, and he, got, yeah. he caught vampirism in the arena, so he's stuck inside the arena using his vampirism to fight through it, but if he steps outside, or doesn't he wait burns. till night to fight, he dies. That's a real so I've, scenario. I've got, um, and it's like that, those types of things I miss, like that those little like situations. One, one thing I will say regarding Oblivion, I mean, as much hate as the current generation of consoles get for them being quote unquote mm. underpowered, I will say something. Nothing was more like nothing. I would say I don't know if it's the correct term, but bottlenecked gaming more than the last generation of consoles, the Xbox 360, PS3, etc. Because if you, like, I know I've, I can only use Bethesda games for reference for this, but Oblivion, Skyrim, Fallout New Vegas. And Fallout 3 to an extent, were all capped some way due to the uh, generation or sorts that were currently out. Like Oblivion yeah. was originally going to be a massive jungle, like Cyrodiil, it was gonna be yeah. a massive jungle. But due to the technology at that time, 
being the consoles because they could obviously yeah. make it for PCs. Yeah. A fun fact about this, uh, actually, a large portion of uh, the reason for this is Microsoft fully agreed to upgrade the RAM due to Bethesda's request. Uh, uh, so they doubled the RAM in the console. I think, from what I remember, don't quote me on this, that Sony refused with the PS3, and that yes. is a large portion of the reason, yeah. because Sony said, no, we're not doing it, so Microsoft ended up with doubled RAM, which is a good thing for them, because let's be honest, Sony opting for a quarter of a gig did not end well towards the yeah. end of a generation. Didn't the Xbox split 216 for the system, 216 for the The auto- Xbox utilised a way where they had... For, oh, I need to... I'll, I'll think now. Uh, it was 512 megabytes in total with... Uh, 256 allocated officially to the CPU and 256 allocated to the GPU. However, both were connected and shared via a high-speed 12 megabyte form of ESRAM or something like that. It wasn't ESRAM, it was something similar. And because of this ESRAM being in place... Uh, fun, and the way that your ES RAM could the could be, could be used is to uh, share share RAM if it was needed between the CPU and the system, and also uh, to um, what was it called? Apply four times MSAA without a counter hit due to it using the RAM as that segment. This was also used in upscaling. Uh, Xbox 360 upscaling looks beautiful. No one's ever said that. That always comes up whenever the Xbox 360 comes I up. I did know. I did notice that when I used to play Skyrim, it used to it was 720p like actual resolution wasn't it but it was upscaled to 1080 when i used to yeah. play it and i would say i don't know how but it just like the clarity of the image shown was just like it looked crisp. it looked brilliant it, the xbox 360 had a brilliant scaler and could apply, right. it could apply anti-aliasing via the four, uh, 11 megabyte uh vram uh vram buffer or whatever it's called i i don't have a technical specifications V-ram-buff. list but you get yeah, the yeah. general idea it was it was clever but i mean it's just it's sort of just like heartbreaking that three of the most critically acclaimed really rpgs or just like they were cap just due to the well, let's say the PS3. Then now you've been what happened with Sony. I sort of understand more. Just to do the Sony, yes. they fucking stopped Skyrim yeah. from having much larger towns and much lush environment, except everything like that. Fallout like New Vegas, like everyone. It, it does like, sound ridiculous to an extent, but yeah. uh, uh, like the so the whole Sony thing. Uh, with unless they completely rebuilt the wasn't it the creation engine was it creation or M- uh, they used Gamebryo up to Game, Skyrim Game, Gamebryo 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 could not utilize the PS3 in any way it was utilizing about two SPUs uh, at best on the but PS3 like and it stuttered PS3, like hell it? you know like the game like the game ran all right on the Xbox 360 because you know it was just a standard power PC based system with was it two times M- SMT on each core or something like that it was a very clever system nice implementation but th- unless they'd completely rewritten the engine you know the PS3 was a large limit in terms okay. of like cross platform games last generation Rockstar up. being the one big <laughs> exception who did the same I know don't wait the next map is more balanced did it, did it, for uh, did it just did it, 3 versus 2 and I'm did just it, just it, did it in general were, hey, like, it went well for us on Osago too. Oh, mm. thanks, killer. Didn't the PS3 in general just have problems with games due to it being so like complicated to properly optimize? As if yeah, the well, issue with the thing is the, S- uh, X- the, the Xbox 360 and the Xbox team at the time were brilliant. They handled it exactly as they should. What they did, they approached developers a long time before the Xbox 360 release. Said, "Hey guys, we think we're going to be moving to Power PC. We know you've been working with x86. We've ported a somewhat similar version of the S- XDK." Uh, well, the SDK over to um, the over to a Power Mac with an ATI graphics card, uh, and we would like you to have a go with developing. You know, see what you can do, porting stuff over, uh, that type of thing. And admittedly, it's a similar thing to what Nintendo did with the Wii U. They, uh, I think, uh, oh. a good example of that is um, well, they didn't change architecture, but you know, they they said here's a emac g3 pretty much it's incredibly underpowered get to work boys because uh, <laughs> it was right. nintendo but you get the idea the, X- the xbox team at the time we're talking 2000 and 2003 4 wherever it was Five, gave six, them power seven, mac nine. gave them power mac said we're going for this type of design uh hop to it and if you need any help we're here the console's going to have these specifications if you've got anything you'd like us to influence on the design of the console please let us know if that type of thing finishing yeah. finishing our talk on consoles though so obviously the next generation of consoles are going to fall upon us very soon yeah. are you excited for it because i mean with mark so i'm one person i to say, think with microsoft's new head of management i'm honestly excited yeah. that they might yeah. pull it out of the bag the xbox one x even at full price it's all right value uh, in Ooh. used price if you buy one used it's very good value. Uh, I mean, you can't I mean, deny it. You've got 4K 60 FPS gaming in that price range. I can do a PC that can beat that, but not everyone wants to, you know. I, it's a console where I put in bloody Forza 7, and I'm playing te- like 4K 60 FPS high settings. 
in yeah. the push of a button. I mean, uh, Phil from Phil's Computer Lab, uh, I, I think uh, he, uh, was it, it might have been a tweet that you replied to of mine. You need he to get Phil on it. I think we should get Phil in, in a podcast sometime. But he, yeah, s- he even Phil said so himself that sometimes in the evening he just wants to relax, so he just breaks out the Xbox yeah. and plays a game. You know, no, and, no. and I'm not for the PC Master Race community as much as everyone here that might support that or might hate on it might be. It, this, yes, it was funny when it was like, oh, per, con, like saying, oh yeah, PCs are better than consoles, which is obvious. But you know, you can't just say my PC is better than your console because yeah. da, da 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 da, and my PC can also do this and da 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 da. Yeah, yeah but PC also in regards to next generation, I mean, with Microsoft announcing the DirectX ray tracing uh, support in March, yeah, I, I would, I wouldn't be surprised if the next generation of consoles did support some form of ray tracing in games, whether it just be the I minor could, things which you're currently seeing, because I can't see them supporting full ray tracing. Support yeah, currently yeah I mean, I could, I could support, I could see them supporting like a pseudo type, yeah. almost RTX right. style thing, depending on Definitely. if they're using, be, depending on the implementation, if they include some form of cores de- dedicated to do that, because admittedly. Yeah. It needs to be a graphical core or a CPU core that can. Yeah, it would have to be RT cores, scaling. wouldn't. It? Yeah, that's. I mean, definitely. At most, it would be first-gen RTX card performance in terms of ray tracing. Yeah, I think. I mean, I, you guys saw my 200 GE video. Yes. I tested, yeah, yeah. I tested <sighs> Quake Two. With path path tracing. Isn't Path Racing better? Path Tracing is technically why is, real. Why is Quake tracing. Two always the subject of all the stupid experiments? <laughs> Quake Two just like, makes sense. Because Quake Two was not a good game on its own. We, we have seen so, the rumors some, of Microsoft releasing the more consoles. Virtual machine. Been. Someone yeah. ported it to her. Because you, because you never know. We could have the we could have the base X like new Xbox, and then we could also have an alternate, which is ray tracing supporting, which would be like the equivalent of a One X, just a really high end console which does I support feel, ray tracing. I personally feel oh, the One X actually. should not have existed. Ow. I feel that the One X should have been its own console, uh, which um, I feel like the one not its own console. I feel like the Xbox One should have released as more of a One X in itself. Is my only yeah. complaint, but which is why I'm say, excited for this ge- next generation because I think Microsoft they know what they stood for. They stood yeah, for high power of... at low price, and that's yeah. what the, every Xbox up till the Xbox and One there's... was, which was just a mistake because they thought, thought hang on, the Connect money. sold well, let's do it but again. At, let's think about at the time though. I mean, it always has been sort of like oh, the the last generation was AMD, and at that time AMD, you know, their CPU terms and like even GPU terms to an extent. They weren't really, well, like, well, of course, this fucking bulldozer architecture, isn't it? The yeah. always junky with cores based on bulldozer, which isn't very efficient, I should it's, say. It's or, the issue is the that, that, that it's just it was a stupid design decision, you know. And get I get that the fact is Microsoft, from a design point, Microsoft's consoles somewhat make sense. I can see what yeah. they're reasoning with. They have access to the DX12 API, which encourages developers to use more cores. They have access to ES yeah. RAM, which allows for high speed high speed swapping, similar to the DDR access on the original Xbox and the 12 megabyte buffer on the Xbox 360. But the issue with that was no one used it. You look at Halo 5 Guardians, yeah. bloody masterpiece on the original Xbox One. Uh, but the problem is. That was an in-house game. It's 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 the PS3 situation all over again, where some some yeah. brilliant things can be done, but unless you're a trained developer that's going to be willing to spend like you know, work your ass off and get it working, you know, no one's going to do it. Yeah, and that's the that's problem. why in-house companies do it. But yeah. even then, to the extent where everyone or well, a lot of people are expecting the Xbox One X to fe- to feature yeah. Zen cores, weren't they? Yeah. Like I mean, personally, I was, but I think the reason why Microsoft may not have done it because I know I I do think of course. It's- Fucking Zen, the next consoles. I mean, yeah. I don't see why they wouldn't. They've already been in talks of AMD. Of course, it will be Zen. But as to what they will oh, use on. for these sort of yeah, GPU pushing, side of things, yeah, it will. <laughs> they definitely will. Just uh, well, you never know. Yeah. They could just go for pure, pure CPU because I think, in terms of resolution, my usual strategy there is jump into the base, but then I realised I had no rocket launcher. Yeah, we've seen 4K <laughs> gaming being possible, but at 30 FPS. So yeah. with the current, in terms of GPU, chef, I'd CPU say right now it's good enough. Of course, it will need to be upgraded, but in CPU terms, I would say they need to focus on that a bit yeah. more rather than GPU feel, this time. I feel like the GPU, uh, admittedly, I feel like the Xbox One itself as a console is just becoming too weak all round. Unless it is, you use it's the weaker than, RAM. yeah, you know, it's weaker like, than the PS4 and new it, games like we've seen in Odyssey. It dips to twenty to twenty-four well, FPS. It's like the, the PS4 itself is already struggling. And it is, and it's struggling it's holding on the CPU better. and GPU side. And the uh, Xbox One is struggling on the CPU. Well, it's not really struggling on the CPU side because it's higher clocks, ES RAM, all that jazz. And you also have to factor in that. I don't mm. know how much you guys know about this, but that's uh, when you use GDDR5 as a um, 
as system RAM, you have very loose timings, which is very bad in for uh, desktop uh, and CPU performance, which is one of the reasons why the, the PS... The uh, PlayStation CPU actually uh, works wor worse than it should than the Xbox One, which uses DDR3. But Jesus then you also man. have the issue that the be. Xbox One is utilizing essentially what is an R7 260, which is, you know, not inherently a good gaming card. Yeah. It's all right. But, you know, they were going to use a 7970-based GPU, which can run everything. It's between a 1050 Ti and 1063 gig nowadays. And with console optimization and DX12, you're looking at, like, 1060 performance in a console that came out in 2012. Yeah, that would have definitely been next generation where they wouldn't have had need for the One X. And then huh? they could have focused all their fucking <laughs> finance on the next generation. Yep, instead they chose the, the Connect was a stupid decision. It sold well once, yeah. it was unique, and the Kinect was It was, was a fun. gimmick. It was a gimmick that sold well and was fun, but people didn't want it again. That was the issue. They they, they focused too much on... It was like... It sounds like... It's like uh, AMD. Back when... Uh, you know, you guys have heard about what happened with AMD. If you go back a few CEOs ago... Uh, the focus swapped <laughs> from the focus swapped from being at the forefront of technical like progression with six core phenoms and all this to hang on a tick. We're about profits now, and the problem with profits is profits and tech don't always go together, as seen by Intel's current situation. As if you stagnate, you quickly fall behind. If you fall behind, you don't make profits. That was and beautiful, Merlin. You get the idea. Yeah, but the yeah, you know, is the I, six to one religion. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we do see the current generation of consoles like ending well with most games, except from indie and sort of like fucking well, better optimized games. I think we will see support cut from a few developers definitely within a few years. I say 2021, 22, the latest. In terms yeah. of like, I say because Bethesda are currently making a new engine. Yeah. And I'd say seeing how Fallout 4, even when it came out around a year after, two years after the PS4 and Xbox was on debut, it didn't hold a constant 30. And the One X and the PS4 Pro. They did hold a constant 30, but even then, did did to 29 at the times. The only due reason to the they held a constant 30 is not due to a GPU side limit. It's due to a CPU side yeah, limit. Yeah, it was a CPU. The, the game, even on a PC, is utilizing four cores max. You've got eight in that console, so you're using 50% of its low clocked power. You know, it's just not going to work. And you can't paralyze all tar uh Parallelize? Paralyze? How do you parallel? Parallel, I don't know. You, you can't yeah, make yeah, all yeah. tasks parallel. Parallelize. You can't do it. It's not. It, you can't make all <laughs> oh, tasks God, parallel. I mean, and I have we'll just have to see because Bethesda are making a quote unquote truly next generational tile, which is known as Starfield, and also Elder Scrolls Six, which is going to come out. Yeah, I mean, currently I'm hyped for Red Dead Redemption Two. I'm going to wait yeah, for Red release, Dead 2. and I'm probably going to. Red Dead 2, you, have you have the news? It oh, looks the post process, and once again, online. somehow Rockstar have managed to improve again upon the shading and everything just what made GTA 5 look so good. Just, it may, oh, it may, it, that's the thing. You think every time Rockstar releases a game, you think, oh, it can't get better than this. Yeah. They somehow managed to surpass expectations. I mean, I'm not going to say too much. Obviously, the game isn't out yet. Yeah, I but know. But from looking see, at the gameplay, so like, off, I'll say with GTA 5, I would say this, it was only as successful as it was due to the foundation oh, yeah. Red Dead Redemption 1 built. Like yeah. If you look at actually in terms of online, all the sort of mini games and everything, you did see some of GTA 4, but Red yeah. Dead Redemption is where you really sort of saw the player interactivity with the world really yeah, implemented. Like, uh, I mean, with what's the races it? and everything like that. You can't. Uh, G GTA Online itself was so good on release. It really, was. Do you remember, it do you remember the Xbox 360 days? But yeah, that's the thing. It, it was never a cash grab. Garage. And the problem is now it's a cash grab. And we, that's admittedly, from what we know, the issue lies more with Take Two as a publisher more than Rockstar as a developer. As Take from a development standpoint, Point. They come off as, yeah. as a very fair studio because I remember back in the 360 days that that, that shark cards weren't exactly a big seller. They weren't even they were. and like you could get all the stuff via jobs quite easily, and people were happy with getting free DLCs. There was meant to be a story mode yeah. DLC. I remember all those days. I remember logging in yeah. and just. But, but in thing, times change. In comparison to GTA 4, <laughs> GTA 5 definitely was disappointed. I mean, with GTA 4, you had the base game, which was. Quite, it, I would say it's sort of like a tech demo in terms of things. Like if you look at the physics and AI used in the game, it was really, I would they say, realistic to an physics. extent. They used euphoric yeah. physics. They, I mean, they, wanted, that is they went available. all out. Same that with, is uh, available in GTA Five. But and I, felt with, I felt that GTA Four was a bit over the top, which a lot it of people was, are with the drive. shit on me with. The euphoria physics could agree. mess up a lot. Drive. Red Dead Redemption toned it down. Yeah, and did it nicely, and I think and GTA improved. Five took it too far. With with GTA, you know, with GTA 4, they sort of they implement too many things. Like you'll be driving, like I'd say, about 
20 miles an hour above that. And you'll try to turn in a corner, and it's like you can't probably turn it due to the weight, just to use how physics work, you know, you have the weight and you're trying to turn a corner at a certain fucking speed and just doesn't, it will flip over, basically. Yeah. I mean, it's just not very realistic. Too realistic. No, not too realistic, though. I think I mean, the thing is, I, 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 I like, I, I, that, so, handling on a vehicle is difficult to master, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. So you when it comes to Nicole Bellage, I mean, you look, you look at games that have done it horribly. Watch Dogs just ported across the Assassin's Creed Four boat physics, which uh, <laughs> was an awful, awful decision to do. Admittedly, I actually played a bit of Watch Dogs. Uh, not, Did they not, see not, Watch Dogs Two? Watch Dogs One. Sorry. No, Watch Dogs yes. One utilized oh the same <laughs> driving engine for boats as it did with vehicles. Let me search this up. Let me search. The driving engine in CS One Point Six is better than that. Yeah, uh, what's it called? Uh, Assassin's saying? Creed 4, we were having a conversation about this. I really enjoyed uh, Assassin's Creed 4, but that's because it felt like, um, what's yeah, it called, Sid Meier's Pirates HD. Assassin's Creed has been, like, fucking shit. They should have called Assassin's it, uh, they, should have, they should have released it as a different Sid franchise. No, not Assassin's Creed, it should have been, yeah. um, Sid, Sid Meier's Pirates I, mean, I agree, I agree with, uh, them expanding upon the series and taking it into new directions, but I mean, it's been, like, what? four games now since you've had a really good sort of traditional Assassin's Creed experience. I mean, at this point, it's literally just, of course, Ubisoft's I corporation played... is going to prioritise money over player I feedback. I played 1, 2, and Revelations, and they were all very good. Revelations is probably my favourite. Revelations felt like the most Assassin's polished Creed. version of the game. Yeah, it was definitely the most polished. And, it, I mean, 3 was just... I'd say with 3, it got a lot of backlash due to like it being quote-unquote too story-focused. But yeah. that's that. I mean, that is what led to Ubisoft actually in Assassin's Creed Four and the future titles just focusing entirely on the fun. gameplay rather than yeah. the story. Because yeah. if you play the later titles, you don't actually get like you don't many get get many references back to like what actually is happening in the story. It's just explore this, explore that, go what? here, go there. Can I get a word in edgeways? Yes, Merlin, continue. Uh, the, the thing with Assassin's Creed Four is we liked it when it was being Steady Eddie's Pirate Adventure, not when it was being Assassin's Creed. Yeah, that well, no, it sounds ridiculous. the The thing that worked best in it, I feel, was the fact that the assassins, the like the assassin combat worked well from a like a sh like a, a ship combat perspective. So, like the way yeah, that you could jump on board, close. disarm someone, and then shoot someone with a flintlock all very smoothly, that worked well. Jumping up on the mast like a bloody flamingo type thing didn't feel very pirate like it felt more like oh looky here i've done some ballerina lessons now let me show off to blackbeard how i can do i don't know pilates or something what was that uh, what was that sailing ship combat game you were talking about earlier Marla? sid Meier's pirates sid Meier's uh, pirates is beautiful naval action was the game i was talking about was it i've never played what's, it yes well, Hamish, what's that game? I mean, budget. What's that game you bought with a, uh, you know, the basically oh, Man and Blade Warbound pirate game? You need to stream that. Sometime. It's surprisingly fun. It's called Caribbean, I think. Car Ca Caribbean, I, I think. I yeah. It's this, it's man. Sid Meier's Pirates with Mountain Blade's combat engine. <laughs> so no, imagine Blade's engine, Assassin's Creed stop. like Assassin's Creed Four with Sid Meier's Pirates meets Assassin's Creed's combat physics. This is that, but with Mountain Blade Warband, and it's good, but also hilarious at the same time. It's good, but it's so shit. It's good. Exactly. That's the thing. And it so works you surprisingly well. You can't well. charge a horse across the deck, then, can you not? What you can do is you can. Uh, from I I don't know I, I'm not too sure what I did in it. I I went to a town and like you click on the tavern and then you're walking around the tavern. You can speak to the bar it, like the innkeeper and you're just like, Gar, watch out for sea dogs. And you're just like, all righty, mate. Um, uh, <laughs> and then you go and recruit some guys. Can I get an objective, please? <laughs> uh, you get the idea. Um, oh. I really, uh, oh, so... I was, I really enjoyed it as a game. Like it was a cheap little indie game. Uh, but saying that thing... though, like, okay, has anyone ever played? Is there any like new indie games that you guys are honestly looking forward to coming out? There's a game Action. due out next year called What the Golf, and also, from the yes. previews I've seen of it, it looks absolutely superb. What's it? Yes, what are you doing? It go on, give me your own. Well, basically, a, a quick review of the bit that I've seen is a guy taking uh, aim at a hole. Yeah, and instead oh, of yeah. the ball going towards the hole, it flirts you against the uh, flag. <laughs> 
And there's also like the playing football trailer, towards a golf hole and yeah. weird stuff. Also, at the end of the trailer, it says, Golf is boring, help us fix it. <laughs> well, I they're mean, not the wrong. Um, is boring. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to. I don't know if Odd World still classes an indie developer because they sort of they went out of business so, to well, a degree. They class, they class CD Projekt Red as, a, <laughs> as an indie developer. Yeah. Okay, then in that case, Odd World technically came back as an indie developer. They're bringing out I mean, Soulstorm <clears throat> because. My favorite bit is, have you no, guys you heard this, this story? Think, this is hilarious. Uh, it's okay. So, odd, like you know, in the early 2000s, it was sort of the beginning of the end for the gaming industry. As, like, you know, mm-hmm. like, as people say, because like a lot of like the creative studios that gave the 90s such a brilliant like time, they, just uh, they were being closed down because publishers realized that uh, like games could be a money maker. So, yeah. Oddworld were like, well, guys, we're we're on the list. You know, we we made some big games. We were popular, but the thing, in fact, is we bring in voice actors, we bring in animators, we have art teams. We're an expensive studio. So, do you know what Lorn Lanning did? He said, "I've been to university. I've done, uh, you know, like <coughs> animation studies. So, what what like PS? Because originally they were going to build build a PS2 game, but they moved to the original Xbox. Um, so, like, what he says is, what PS2 models have we got, and what footage have we actually got? Because at this time, you couldn't show PS2 footage because, you know, the console was still under NDA. Yeah. So what they did was they took all the models that were designed for PS2 hardware, all the levels that were designed PC. for PS2 hardware, took it to a PC with similar specifications, and rendered it in real time. And then because they rendered it in real time, they released it as simulation of PS2 footage. And because of that... They got so much popularity out of this is what the next generation is going to be like because the footage looked brilliant. And admittedly, the next Oddworld game did look brilliant. Uh, and the fact is, uh, the publishers called the next day saying, what are you doing? You can't do this. And he was just like, well, if you look at the technicalities, we can release we can. footage. We can do this. <laughs> but the fact is, the publisher couldn't close them down at this point because there would be so much uproar over closing the guys that were like the hot topic on PS2 development. <laughs> so he managed to figure out his way around it by not actually releasing any footage. <laughs> I love that story. The only game I'm probably looking most forward to in the upcoming years is probably going to be, I don't know, I think you could classify it definitely, Stalker. Stalker. Next isn't there, Stalker. Isn't there two, in... Yes. I am looking. Oh, I haven't played just... Stalker. Mm. I, I haven't need... played Stalker. I own it. I haven't played it. I know. I mean, awful. there's been like an abundant, of, like fucking dozens and dozens and dozens of fucking overhauls for the game, which has had more realism. So yeah. if they're looking at that, I think Stalker Two is just going to be like every immersion for extreme game, especially if you're like Fallout and you care about immersion. The new Metro but... game is going to take a lot of advantage from like ray tracing. I yeah, could, but that's I just like. I can only see those devs doing that because apparently Metro. Isn't Metro Last Light the only game that has a really accurate in game benchmark that's not only demanding, but representative yes. of real gameplay? Yeah. yeah. But even then. Because it's a place in the game. Oh, is that Metro. That's, that's the thing, though. If they're talking so much about ray tracing with Metro, is it just going to be more of a tech demo about what they can do with ray tracing, or is it actually going to be no, about. It's going to be this in is... the game. It's going to be like a part of the game. Yes, I know they're going to include it, but I don't want it to feel too much like a tech demo, like where everything's based around ray tracing and the global illumination. I feel like I feel like as much as I love ray tracing and path tracing, because admittedly, the uh, eight megs you've seen the Quake Two. Oh yeah, look, the reflections look gorgeous, but the 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 issue the issue with it is. You could fake those, and I wouldn't be struggling to run the game at 40 FPS on an AMD Fury that can run everything at 4K. <laughs> you know, like, good point. Is... I've been doing that on my I've been doing that on my new open arena map uh, on my T60, uh, which is case... why. Every... Oh, what's it called? No, I was just going to which... say, in case anyone was wondering, uh, Eight Megs is into uh, what do you call it? Open arena mapping. So if you want to join the server, you can join the Discord and speak to Eight Megs, and we've got like, a... well, you've got a server going, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, continue, Apex. It's a bit of a weird. yeah, and um, that's the reason why things started melting in my T60 a few days ago. <laughs> rendering. Uh, wait, yes, did you rendering. actually try? Did you try giving a re- like path tracing a go? Path traced. Well, yeah, it was sort of. I, I, I tried to. <laughs> sort I tried, of. Yeah. yeah Basically, okay. I had tr- oh, I had eight dumb. bounces, and the and it made my Wi-Fi antenna cable in place uh, <laughs> melt, and then the. Wi Fi antenna cable and get caught up on my fan. Not always a good thing to happen. I mean, what's it called? I, I gave my, uh, I gave, I compiled the benchmark thing that I uploaded. I gave it to Rio. He was just like, wow, it's running great. I don't know what you're on about. And the game looks great. I'm just like, Rio, did you actually enable ray tracing? He hadn't enabled any of the <laughs> ray tracing options. He was running the standard Quake 2. I was like, right, mate, you know, you need the benchmark. 
Because <laughs> to enable the benchmark, it's uh, GL, uh, GLPT enable, GLPT enable Sky, GLPT enable uh, uh, AO or something like that. And that's my benchmarking settings. Because that's like the most representative of what you can get as a ray traced experience or path tracing because it's, you know, the real thing. Oh, you were going on about games you were waiting for. There yeah. are rumors of a new Diablo. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> but at the same yeah. time. Exactly what kind of new game is another matter at the minute. Where the fuck did you go, Merlin? I'm just here. I wouldn't mind a new Diablo. I was recently playing Diablo 3 with you, and okay. I did enjoy that, although it did feel a bit... I wouldn't say false pace because that was just due to the way we were playing it, but it didn't feel as sort of like... It didn't really encourage us to explore the world as much as Diablo 2 did. Yeah, try it single player without me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Wayne likes to speed through his games. My boy Wayne does not want he to played. replay a game that he's already played 50 times with you. He's played that for fucking six years. <laughs> yeah, but um, I am a little bit... Wayne is a master okay. of the game. In fact, rumour has it, Wayne is already recreating the game in Unity. Yeah, what does it? Wayne is Diablo. What's it called? That's one thing. I, uh, I've been noticing a lot more, like... One thing that I notice is whenever I benchmark Unity-based games, they do tend to perform really poorly unless they're done really well. Only one game I can think of off the top of my head other than City Skylines, which is still really affected by the Unity, you know, issues, is Oddworld New and Tasty, which is built on Unity but runs flawlessly. Their mobile port has the full PC options. Kerbal Space Program works, but you know, you can't exactly claim... I say you can't claim it's optimised. I used to play it on a Pentium M and ATI Radian Mobility X300. So it's optimised, but you know, it's not the best. You can do better. Yeah, but it's on fucking Unity. Yes, it's on Unity. It doesn't look like a middle schooler's fucking thing he had to do for a grade. Excuse me, I made GTA 7 official for my. Uh, <laughs> you guys haven't seen that. It's a. Uh, I. Uh, I mean, it was year nine. I mean, let me take. Let oh, me take no. you. Let me take you back. Year nine, and I'm. I'm. Uh, I, we're told we have to make a game in Scratch. You guys have heard of Scratch, right? Oh, and I'm just like. I'm just like. Oh boy. So what do I do? I make a platformer with uh with my own sound effects. We had to have sound implementation all that, and it plays. Once you, uh, once you, uh, once, once you click play, it says, yeah, play the game, yeah, uh, <laughs> once you click play, and then every time you bounce, it says, bounce, bounce, <laughs> bounce, uh, and then, uh, what's it called, and, um, What's, uh, there's another thing to it. It's also stuck playing in the background. I needed some royalty-free music. So I went with the live cover of Elvis Presley, It'll Be Lonely This Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so you start playing and they hear, bum, 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 do, do, do. <laughs> It'll be when, lonely uh, this Christmas. When I play games in uh, Scratch and uh, the, uh, the uh, I made a real shooter, right? Mm. But, uh, the teacher claimed it was too violent and refused to mark me on it. Oh, that's unfair. I mean, if you could make a rail shooter, that's already impressive enough, because I'll be honest, my abomination of a game called GTA 7 Official. I want to see how many people would click on it. <laughs> Uh, called GTA 7 Official or something. I don't even know if it's still... I think it, I think it got um, taken down due to uh, copyright issues. Apparently, you just because Elvis is singing live. I, I just want to you know attack you in this game, Merlin. Uh, what's it called? Um, but yeah, it's been... Join my team, brilliant. I, I, what do you guys think of... Uh, what's that new game? CJ, CD Projekt Red's... Uh, uh, Cyberpunk 2077. 2077. I, I've seen the demo. I've seen the demo. I want to play I that think it game. Looks, I think it looks fun. It looks like everything I've dreamed of in an RPG that looks like KOTOR. Uh, so... you know you know, the thing is with uh, Cyberpunk, it could look turn out amazingly shit. Oh, I'm back down. It I could, I mean, why. from what we've seen... Can I finish? Yeah. Please? Yeah. Uh, because uh, CD Projekt Red have employed a lot of people from the internet, like freelancers, to make Ooh. the game. Like you, were you involved? Is this insider no. information? No, I'm not involved. You could go on their website and there is a big fuck off uh, thing saying, we need people, please. We will pay you money to give us ideas. Didn't they hire one of the most like re-owned fucking RPG makers, uh, Chris Avalon, who you worked on Fallout 1 and 2? Yeah, I'm looking really forward to that. Yeah, but he did a beautiful job on Fallout One. Definitely, so, definitely. Know. I mean, go on, carry on what you said. I heard random Joe Schmoes. Yeah, yeah but I'm the sure. fact is, random Joe Schmoes includes our boy Eight Megs here, who is, <laughs> who is who is now working on the game. In fact, I've heard 
I've heard. Don't, <laughs> don't don't tell anyone. Don't 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 quote me on this. Eight megs is actually porting the entire game to Linux to if you Linux. use Gentoo. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, I'm yeah, just implementing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ported the entire game to the Quake engine. From what we've seen about yeah. Quake, Quake, from... Quake One, because I'm so stuck in my ways, I can't use a more modern <laughs> map editor. <laughs> From what I've seen about Cyberpunk 2077, the actual gunplay, I would say my only criticism on the game so far is the gunplay looked kind of bland, sort of like Fallout 4 Rescue it in terms looked, of it's very it looked, linear. It looked, it looked, it looked is... good though. It looked good in terms of animation. It looked fairly mediocre when it came to actual... You yeah, know. actually shooting the guns, it didn't look very well. It didn't look fun. It didn't get much feedback. Polish people who know anything about swords and fuck all about things that shoot. Are you speaking on behalf of the entirety of Poland? Sort of. <laughs> he's speaking as an Eastern European. As an Eastern European, my opinion on Poland consists of they know nothing about anything that isn't swords. No, Poland is a wonderful country. Visit it. Apparently, Poland's like up and coming this... in terms of like tourism, though, isn't it? Yeah. It like, is. I, I actually might go there, you know, like apparently, it what is, is, it? is it Warsaw? Is Warsaw, uh, Warsaw is their capital. Yep. Yes. Warsaw is their capital. War, 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 what? You should go to Krakow <laughs> because Krakow is better than fucking Warsaw. Krakow is located I'm in Moscow. Fucked over by someone who sold me a camera on eBay from Krakow. Can you really? beat the shit out of them while you're there for me? <laughs> <laughs> what camera did you buy? And how the hell? Did... Yeah, I feel right. like we need a backstory to this story. It, it was a Nikon so FE. Yeah. And uh, it was in much worse condition than advertised. <laughs> <laughs> Lightly <laughs> used. It <laughs> arrives. Lightly used. Only one fucking shutter speed worked, and uh, the lens <laughs> wouldn't come off. Lightly used. What do you that, want? That's cool. What you call reliable. It had been dropped on the lens. You see, so the lens mount was warped, so the lens wouldn't actually come off. <laughs> Not. Good. Yeah. You never, you never really want to see that in a, uh, in a I'm camera right. you buy. No. Yeah, you never want to see the. Saying that though, I was looking at new camera. cameras. I mean, I was talking to uh, thirty-two megabytes. I mean, I think we can all agree when it comes to like cinematography, thirty-two megabytes. He is the go-to guy on cinematic tech. I mean, Jesus, if I could edit ten percent of the stage that he could, we, we, we'd have some much better budget builds videos. No, I I'm, don't I'm... think I don't think thirty-two megabytes videos are particularly well edited. I think they just jump around a lot. It depends if you like the style. I personally love the style because it's sort of a, uh, it's sort of I, again, I like I, I, going with it. I watched Dragon One, so I know nothing. Yeah, <laughs> no offense. <laughs> I really like his, his his style of things, but no, I, I'm I'm quite, I'm quite keen on my own editing as well. It's it's to the point is how I describe my editing style. But yeah, he was recommending some cameras, and the, is it the Nikon D two hundred D he recommended? So I might be end up getting yeah, a new yeah, camera yeah, soon. Uh, because I was looking into the Panasonic GH7 because I, I use a GH2, yeah. uh, and I've no. been told that the uh, the Nikon would be uh, a better buy, yeah. and it looks pretty better good. Better value for yeah. So uh, well, I, I have might... a Nikon, but it's from the seventies and cost me a tenner on eBay, so uh, is I don't it, think is it I the can one from really No, it's one from uh, any... England somewhere. Oh, Did from England? Is it any from any England? Program. What's your opinion what? on England? Uh, give us. Snow I don't really have an opinion. Back. You ought to have a good opinion on England. I've been to uh, Ireland. As an English <laughs> member of society, I've been to England. <laughs> what well, an English you, I didn't realise what I just said. You've been to Northern Ireland. Ireland. That's England. just basically just just <laughs> extreme uh, extreme West England. I'll be brutally honest. When I went to Northern Ireland, it came across as Scotland, but with an Irish accent. <laughs> well, yeah. Mo here's the thing, right? Most of the people there are culturally Scottish because they all came over here in 1600 yeah. uh, something with Cromwell. Oh, a lovely country, though. I mean, uh, drunkest I've ever been. <laughs> yeah, lies. You've been drunker. I know you. Yeah, no, that time I went to Bosnia with Merlin. Oh, oh, that that gets me every time. All that Bosnian beer, <laughs> Bosnian beer. Oh, I don't drink beer. Would not be. Clear. They drink turpentine. <laughs> Mama, it's a turnip time. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like the turnip time story deserves a uh, a story. Uh, Thomas, could you explain the turnip time story? Uh, so I was in voice chat with these fellows here. I decided to go get a drink. Now, I live in London. It's quite a, let's say, a vibrant place. You experience a lot of things, and you see a lot of things as well. Yeah, so I just went downstairs, you know, to my kitchen to make a drink. Can I just take a little peek at my window? And I just see this very innocent looking child with his mother, and then... Thought nothing of it. I was walking away, and I just hear very faintly, "Mama, can I have a turnip?" <laughs> it was just so innocent and pure. It was just like, <laughs> "Fuck!" It's it was just like, brought a tear to my eye. 
<laughs> that kid really. Some kids just don't want sweets for Christmas. They just want to turn it. And ever since then, I can't laugh at that. I, I love that, that story. Tuesday, one thirty-five p.m. has become turnip time. Turnip time. <laughs> <laughs> it's currently. It is not currently turnip hours. <laughs> I feel. I feel like we've now got about an hour and a half of us joking about turnip time and other no, various crap. I feel like we should round really? off. It's been a very productive uh, <laughs> podcast, actually. No, so I'd no, like. No, no. I'll go through. Uh, thank you very much to Merlin for joining us. You're very welcome. Please never joke about me ever again, or I will hit you. Thank you very much to Eight Mix. Thank you. I promise I won't um, make that joke again. <laughs> the joke they won't hear because it's been removed. <laughs> yes, that will. <laughs> uh, thank you very much to Wayne. But now the problem. Uh, and, thank, and thank you very much to Thomas. Thank you everyone for watching. We'll see you in another video. Goodbye. And I would also like to thank myself for uh, for, for for setting up my own PC. I was benchmarking a PC before I got before we decided to do this. But anyway, it's been a good podcast. So good night from me. Good night from everyone else. I take it. Good night. Good night. Good night, children. And, uh, that was fun. And we will uh, we will catch you in uh, in the next one. Toodaloo. See you. Yeah.